Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. So yesterday, I talked about the mineral requirements for electricity generation. This is renewables. It talked a little bit about electric vehicles. And the big key takeaway here is that, for example, I'm gonna read it here real quick. It says, for example, electric vehicles are six times more intensive for critical minerals than the fossil fuel alternatives they replace. The renewables are also a lot more mineral intensive. And what that means is that they have more minerals, you know, they, they use more minerals, just in total number, and they use more of those minerals. So when you think of this, uh, if we're gonna go to this, uh, this new world of emissionless uh, power generation, emissionless uh, electric vehicles, and, and all of those things, we're gonna have to move a lot more minerals. We have to physically move these minerals to the manufacturing facilities for this to happen. And we, to touch on some of the, the mineral intensities here, just to give you a quick overview, um, this is the offshore wind and the mineral intensity here of different minerals. We've got copper, nickel, manganese, cobalt in there. Cobalt's uh, dark blue in one of these. Chromium, molybdenum, zinc, rare earths. So they got all this stuff there, right? Same with onshore wind and solar PV. Nuclear coal and natural gas are far less mineral intense. So if we go to a world that has a lot of wind and solar, uh, what we're doing is we're going to a world that is a lot more mineral intensive. It's, it's that simple. And we've got all these minerals that we're trying to use. Uh, they're also a lot more mineral intensive per terawatt hour of energy produced. There it is uh, in terms of tons per terawatt hour, offshore wind, solar, and nuclear, and coal and gas are actually pretty low mineral intensity. The question that we should have is, how do we play this? How do we invest in it? Right? That, that should be the question. Uh, so I, I, I obviously I put this up there. Um, getting these minerals out of the ground is one very energy intensive in itself. So the energy return on energy invest is going to be much lower for wind and solar. But if we're going to move to this next new world and we don't have all of the, the mining equipment basically on, on electric yet, and that will switch with time, uh, we are going to use copious amounts of diesel, copious amounts of oil, coal, natural gas. Uh, we're going to use all this energy to make this happen. We also have to update all of our grid systems to handle a larger electrified world. So when one ponders this, and this is how I set up the Finding Value website, our investments, it's, it's based around this energy theme. It's based around the movement of materials around the world. It's much deeper than just the surface of being in value. I mean, these are all, a lot of these are value stocks because they are gonna create copious amounts of cash for this to happen, for this world to happen. But we have to move all this stuff around. How do we move it? We, we move it by ship. We move it by specifically dry bulk shipping. And the dry bulk shipping, that's where I think we could potentially have a squeeze. So if you, if you look at this, we can play the energy route. We've got uh, energy. We can play that. Um, that's going to be needed because we're going to have to use energy to make this world happen, to make the renewable world happen. Uh, I have... Uh, great exposure to uranium, which is the fuel for nuclear. So I think that nuclear is also a very good bet because I don't know if we're going to have the minerals in the quantities needed to ramp up wind and solar. Nuclear is a high energy on return. It's very low in terms of its mineral intensity. So if we were to build a bunch of nuclear, uh, we could do that if we ran into shortages of solar and wind. And it's a superior form of generating electricity. And if you don't have the copper, if you don't have some of these uh, minerals, you can't run the, the, the grid to connect everything. So you're going to have to go with something else uh, in the interim if you can't mine all this stuff out at the quantities that we want to, to mine it. Now we have to move this stuff and shipping. If, we don't, if, if we've underbuilt the shipping capacity to ship all of these minerals around the world, what do you think shipping rates are going to do? 
And they're probably going to go up, Mr. Finding Value. Exactly. They're going to go up. Uh, and they're still not building a lot of dry bulk shipping. Uh, so what I've done is I've positioned myself in shipping companies that I think are the best and have great technical chart pattern setups that are also incredibly undervalued from a fundamental basis. And they look ready to take off right now. Some of them are breaking patterns. If you want to know what they are, sign up to the Finding Value website and the Platinum membership, and you can see the companies that I'm positioned in and which ones I think are the best. I have them all on the website if you're looking for shipping. Now, energy, 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 energy. Uh, nuclear, uh, it, more specifically, uranium, the fuel that runs uh, nuclear. Uh, I think that uranium uh, is, is looking quite cheap right here. It's looking cheap. Again, I've got all the, the, the ticker symbols and stuff that I've already shared with all the Platinum members. But that one also looks really good. Uh, I think it's pulled back with the overall markets. And yes, it is somewhat correlated to the overall markets. Remember, this is money flows, guys. It's money flows. Because if a lot of money comes out of the market in, in, in mass and everything's very leveraged, people are going to sell everything across the board because they have to raise capital to meet margin requirements. So that's part of the game. That's part of the game. It's knowing what the game is and, and waiting for these pullbacks. And sometimes the pullbacks are, are difficult to see. No one's going to get this 100% right. All you can do is, is buy what's right in front of you if you think it's a good deal. Then we've got uh, natural gas. That's our, our bridge fuel. Natural gas in this new world that's coming up is the bridge from here till there. Uh, they're replacing coal power plants. They're putting in natural gas power plants in its place. They run all of the, the stuff to that hub. They condition the, the direct current signal to air alternating current and send it along the grid. The transition or the, the, the thing that fills in the gap is natural gas. So I'm a huge natural gas bull, massive bull, uh, because one, we've been replacing coal power plants with natural gas. Uh, and two, natural gas is the transition fuel. It's used to heat homes. It's used in a whole bunch of different things. Uh, I also think that with the world markets, struggling with the natural gas price over in Europe and Asia gives us an opportunity in the United States to play that difference, that arbitrage there, where I think eventually the natural gas in America will move higher as we sh ship more natural gas overseas. And again, everything is going to be transferring through ships. And then you've got oil. Uh, oil is what is used in all these. Uh, it's a number one commodity. Uh, we have inflation. We've got liquidity coming from the real estate market that will also be uh, needed. And then you got the mining companies, the mining companies that mine these minerals. If you look at previous cycles, uh, copper has been a pretty solid performer. I think copper, since it's it's basically the it's the thing that is going to connect everything. So I think copper having some copper exposure. I have my copper exposure through large diversified mining companies. Uh, the big boys. And, and that's where I keep the bulk of my money for copper exposure. I do have some small speculative plays in the royalty areas as well. Uh, and actually, that looks very good uh, if you know which company I'm talking about. Then you've got these other, um, other minerals that they have. The diversified mining companies mine most of those minerals. So they're going to capture the majority of this, of this move, the big diversified mining companies. So those are some that I really piled in. Uh, for this big commodity bull market that's coming, that's going to pay me big fat dividends. And most likely, I'm going to get bigger and bigger dividends as the price of these minerals go up. And then uh, we've got royalty companies. We've got the liquidity tied with all this. Uh, shortages usually lead to higher prices. Higher prices usually lead to higher inflation. Um, in terms of consumer price index inflation, the way that they measure it, inflation's just money into the system. Uh, the demographic is what piles the money into the system and money rotates into this stuff from that liquidity uh, through higher inflation and eventually higher interest rates, which causes that rotation. So the money's going to rotate over as well based off of the inflation that's in the system. Uh, so all of this is an alignment, guys. It's all in alignment. This is where life-changing investments uh, could come into play. And if you need help with, with coming up with a strategy coming up with companies, uh, because you, what you can do is you can get the timing exactly right, and you pick really bad companies, vehicles to, to play the bull market with. Um, 
that's something you don't want to do. And sometimes it's hard to figure out which ones are the best. And no one's going to nail it perfect. But if you nail a couple that are really good, it can drastically change your portfolio and potentially your life, depending on how much uh, they can return. So I've got, I've set up investments that are, some are are progressing already. They're in mid stride of the cheetah, say like oil companies, natural gas companies. I'd say they're kind of in mid stride now. Uh, uranium is starting to get moving. I don't know if it's in mid stride yet, but it's 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 progressing over the past years. So that one's looking good. There's some that are very low, like shipping is still incredibly low. Energy service companies, uh, they're starting to kind of round and come back up. Uh, those are also looking really good. But I'm going to tell you this, guys. Um, these opportunities don't last forever. And I'm playing the entire bull market. What does that mean? I am buying the assets. I'm holding on to these assets for the entire bull market that's ahead of us. That's how I'm playing it. I'm playing the big trend. The big trend is this. This right behind me. The energy markets, the emissions reduction, and, and the energy gathering systems of the future. And they're all far more mineral intensive. And if we don't have the minerals, I'm gonna, that's, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play both sides of it. I'm going to play for the transition through the minerals. And then I'm going to play the power generation of today. Because I don't think the transition is going to go smoothly. I don't think we have the storage of electricity figured out. Therefore, all energy is game. All energy is game. Now, I don't know how much the solar companies and wind manufacturers are going to make. I don't know if their margins are going to be good. But I'm pretty sure that if you get a royalty company that sells these metals and the diversified mining companies, that they're probably going to figure out ways to extract this with very good profits. And I think that the shipping companies should do well, because if you have a shortage of ships and you can't ship this all around, the prices are going to go up. That's what we're seeing. We're seeing prices start to firm up quite a bit. And with the companies are uh, so low and the, the charts looking so good. It's another potential investment opportunity. And again, I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna push the website. If you guys need help setting this up, subscribe to the website. Check out the companies I've got. Uh, even if you even if you only stay for a couple months, you get you get some of those companies. You get the companies, and you can you can attend some of the question and answer session. Gain that confidence. Gain some training in technical analysis, and come out of it a lot stronger than what you were beforehand. And again, there's a lot of information. You could get information overload. That's why I have the question and answer session so you guys can ask me questions. And I'll try to answer them as best you can. And I'll try to be as honest as I can. I can tell you this, guys. And I'm just going to go kind of through my experience like real quick. Um, the setup is here. It's right behind us. It's right there. Uh, we've got an energy crisis ahead of us. We've got an energy transition. It's very mineral intensive. We've got liquidity coming into the system. The demographic supports it. This alignment doesn't happen often. Money can be made very quickly in copious amounts here. And, and the last time that this happened was in the mid-2000s with that demographic coming through. This one, I think, could be a little bit larger because we've got a little bit different demand supply uh, characteristics in front of us. So what I'm doing is I'm buying the assets to hold it for the trend. This trend could last for a long time. And if you you got to focus your time frame on maybe a five to ten year time frame, not so much on a week or months time frame. We are going to be it's going to be very volatile. It's going to be rough to hold through. If you need help, join the website. Why? Because you don't get these opportunities that much. Get the network. Get people that are similar, like minded. Get together. Have a support group. Ride it through. And I can run that. That's what I'm doing. That's what the website basically is. It's a support group to run through like-minded individuals who want to hold on through this bull market. And, and it's a community. Join it. Help us be stronger. Uh, and if you guys have ideas too, put it in the comment section of maybe companies that you've seen or, or ones that you think that look a little bit ridiculous. Because I'm all about getting in some ridiculous uh, swinging for the fence type companies. Uh, not so much the explorers, but more of the deep value stuff. I'm still looking. I'm still um, always got my eye out for companies. I'm looking at also the the fractals and the and the patterns. 
those big fractals. Uh, and I found some. I found some. I think they're great to have some exposure to those. Uh, the fractals are the size of the move that's about to come. So um, I'll end it there, guys. Uh, again, uh, this is it. This is this is the opportunity is right in front of us. Now it's just how do you capitalize on it? And I can help you do that. Give me a thumb up for the content. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the website if you want. And uh, appreciate you guys listening. This is Finding Value.